Though they were allies during World War II, the United States and the Communist Union of Soviet Socialist Republics struggled afterwards in a treacherous tug of war for global supremacy. Its result, the proliferation of nuclear weapons and a 45-year conflict called the Cold War. At its core was the race to space. In 1957, the USSR launched a 22-inch, 184-pound artificial satellite called Sputnik, the first ever to orbit Earth. The U.S. responded a year later with its own versions, one of which is still in space today. But Sputnik's greatest impact on the U.S. was fear, panic that the USSR would attempt a nuclear attack. So both countries escalated their nuclear capabilities as a strategy for never having to use them. This counterintuitive tactic for deterrence is based on the idea called mutual assured destruction in which one side produces weapons in order to keep the other side from ever launching theirs. President Richard Nixon created the Safeguard Anti-Ballistic Missile Program to protect the country's Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, or ICBMs, that would be used to retaliate if the Soviet Union or China initiated a nuclear attack. During the 1960s, the two countries were spending more than $50 million a day on weapons they did not want to use. This eventually led to an agreement called the Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty that restricted each country to deploying only one anti-ballistic missile site. In the U.S., the chosen site was the Stanley R. Mickelson Safeguard Complex in North Dakota. Before the Safeguard program began, an ABM system called Sentinel had been put in place to combat a growing nuclear threat from China. Sentinel was designed to defend urban and industrial locations as well as ICBM missile sites, worrying many Americans who lived near those locales. Safeguard replaced Sentinel in 1969, and the new program focused its efforts on protecting only ICBM sites. Safeguard utilized missile and radar technology to destroy incoming enemy missiles in the exoatmosphere, 300 miles or more from the Earth's surface. A perimeter acquisition radar, known as PAR, could detect missiles as they crossed over the North Pole and pass along the information to another radar system that guided U.S. missiles to the target, all in six seconds. But in that same year, Congress deactivated the safeguard system, leaving in place only the PAR, which the Air Force uses as part of its early warning system today. In 1976, the safeguard mission was officially terminated. For the Safeguard program, the Army selected soldiers with proven skills in air defense artillery operations and intelligence. At Fort Bliss, they trained extensively and expensively. More than $100 million was spent to support a curriculum of 99 courses. The soldiers were schooled in three main areas. First, they needed to learn about the major components of the system, including radar technology, environmental equipment, power generation, and of course, the two missiles, the Spartan and the Sprint. Also, they learned how to handle and maintain the weapon system, monitor and identify missile target direction. Finally, the soldiers studied how to arm and deploy missiles, control the underground operation station, prepare launch equipment, and conduct routine and corrective maintenance and testing. While it was an honor to be selected for the Safeguard program, soldiers knew there were risks involved. Mistakes could prove fatal, particularly inside the silos where the missiles waited for launch, armed with nuclear warheads. Two soldiers were required to be together at all times to ensure safety. In the end, 133 soldiers graduated from the program. Said one, we got instruction for 138 hours on each system, from tip to tail. From its inception to its end, Safeguard laid the groundwork for the country's efforts in nuclear defense. For the three decades following its brief period of operation, the U.S. supported arms control and non-proliferation measures. Although the Mickelson site was only fully operational for less than 24 hours, the experience and knowledge gained during development of the Safeguard system led to technological advancements long into the future.
The Safeguard Missile Training Program at Fort Bliss was a manifestation of Cold War events that called for increased capability in detecting and combating enemy missiles for our nation's safety. The Safeguard Missile Park here at Fort Bliss is where soldiers once performed hands-on training for operating the Spartan and Sprint missiles that were crucial to the Safeguard system.